This is my modified Axminster milling machine. It's only a hobby level machine, nothing special. Uh, direct drive on the z-axis which I'm going to have a look at today going through a rather shoddy coupler I made into a worm drive and then down into a rack and pinion on the spindle which has got a little bit of play in it so that's not a good start but having used this for well over 15,000 hours uh, I know it can do reasonably good accuracy so uh, I'm going to clock it up and see how good or bad it actually is and see if we can improve on things. Right, I've got a Mitotoyu test gauge in here which I think is just about visible. Uh, it's got a 10 micron resolution, plus or minus 10 micron is the stated accuracy of the thing. Not the greatest gauge that they produce, but it's good enough for this machine. In theory, this machine should be able to move vertically in steps of about 1.56 microns. It's a 200 turn per revolution stepper motor, direct drive, and it's uh, 2,500, 2.5 millimetres per revolution on the axis. So if you divide that down, one step on the motor should be 12.5 microns in the vertical. Uh, it is running on a, an 8 micro stepping controller, so theoretically each micro step is about 1.56 microns, but I don't think we're going to get anywhere near that. Uh, but uh, we'll see how good it really is. So um, let's just bring this down to zero. There we go, just take it a couple down and reset the origin. There we go, and let's move down one millimeter and see what it says. 1.03, so 30 microns. Yep, 30 microns out. Same again, and it's back to zero. So, 30 microns, not terrible, but uh, let's see what happens if we move down to a lower resolution. Let's try 100 microns. Oh, that's spot on. Two, three, four, five, six. Ah, uh, we're ten microns out there. Seven, eight, twenty microns. And there's our thirty. So, yeah, that's not looking too bad. Going up. Yeah, we're ten out there. Yeah. Okay, 20 out there. So, that's not bad. That's not bad. Let's try 10 microns. Really push this thing. That's done nothing. Well, there we go, 10, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Well, that's not too bad. It is moving fairly consistently in 10 micron steps. Go back up. Okay, that's not awful. And that's spot on zero according to the machine. So, yeah, it looks like we can hit 10 microns. Plus or minus maybe. 10 microns. Yeah, it's occasionally missing a step there, but it is going back to zero. That should be 10, and that's saying 9. It should be 20, and that's saying 20. So I think it could be just a rounding error. But yeah, that's not bad. Okay, let's try taking it up a bit. Try taking it back down again. That should be zero, and it is. So it's consistent, and it's about 10 micron accuracy. But that's only in the centre of the table. I've now got to map out the whole of the table and see how good it is uh, all over the place. And over on the uh, far right here, there is actually a bit of damage to the table, so I'm not expecting great results there. But um, yeah, at least in the middle, not bad. Right, well this is the, the dodgy area, you can perhaps see that it's broken off here. Uh, the guy I bought this off said that his young son had put a screwdriver under here and managed to snap this bit out, so he must have been a pretty strong kid to do that. But uh, I haven't reset the dial in any way, I'm currently allegedly three millimetres above zero, 
So let's see what it reads when we come down. It's two, that's one, and that should be zero, but we're actually reading 140 microns high, so we're definitely high on this edge here. Uh, so I'm going to have to do something about that. Uh, I have mapped the rest of it out, and uh, if we have a look at those, we can see just how bad or good the table actually is. Right, well, I've been around the whole table a couple of times and mapped it all out, and it's actually pretty good over on this side. Uh, zero in the middle, and at the top and bottom, I'm no worse than about 30 microns high. Surprising that there's nowhere that's actually low, so uh, perhaps it's just seen a little bit more work in the center area here and slightly less at the corners, but nevertheless, within the resolution of the gauge and the accuracy of the thing, 30 microns, you know, that's, that's down to dust. There could even be dust on the table, to be honest, specks of swarf and so on. But over on this side, it's not so great. Uh, it's about 50, 60, 70 microns out in this corner, and where this damage area is, uh, it's 140, 160 microns out across there. So I definitely need to do something on this uh, corner section here. It would be uh, possible to take the whole table off and regrind it, but that could make things worse rather than better. Uh, getting into machine this is difficult because I haven't actually got the reach on the table to get right to the edges of these T-slots. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, cut a plate down that will fit over the whole of the centre section, bolt that down to the table and then surface the whole lot so that we can get it as accurate as is possible on this machine. But it's looking pretty good. I think 10-20 microns is not terrible for a machine of this age and uh, the amount of work that it's done. So let's go find a piece of aluminium. I've got a piece of 10mm aluminium plate on the table and it fits quite nice in the area that I'm going to be uh, using. It's uh, 380 long and 100mm wide uh, which is about the limit of what this machine can actually travel and cut. So uh, I'm going to cut a few holes through it and then use these T-slot nuts that I've already made. I've got eight of these. So I'm just going to drill four holes on either side and then these will live underneath it and then I've just got to counterbore these down about six, six and a half millimetres and then I can take the clamps off, put this table back on and this time clamp it down to the table using the T-nuts uh, and then it's a nice and simple job just to surface over the whole lot, a couple of hundred microns and hopefully we'll get rid of this high spot. But uh, first things, let's drill a few holes. Okay, well here's the finished plate, all the counterboard holes for my 6mm cap head bolts and they just fit in and when they're tightened up they should be about half a millimetre beneath the surface. So all I've got to do now is get this on there using these T-slots which is going to be a little tricky because I can't actually slide it in from the end so I'm going to have to just wiggle my way around and get these lined up and tighten it all up. Uh, so that might take a few minutes but I shall be back when I've got that sorted. Well, that wasn't enormously difficult. It's all bolted in. All of the cap head bolts are very slightly below the surface, about half a millimetre, which is fine, because I'm only going 50 microns deep. Uh, and so, in theory, it'll only just scuff the surface at this side, and then by the time we get to the other end of the plate, it should be cutting about 200 microns. Uh, and we'll see how that comes out. It could take a few minutes, but I'm not going to risk it. I've swapped out for a proper collet set here, and I'm using a, a brand new 20mm high-speed steel slot drill, which should give us a nice clean cut. I was tempted to use an end mill, but um, I don't know. We'll see how we get on. I can always change that later. So, here we go. Moment of truth.
That took about an hour in real time. And it's not too bad. I can feel a few ridges as I run my finger across it. But I suspect with a bit of a polish they would pretty much go away. But I'm going to do a, a second pass offset between these uh, just for good measure. Same depth. Uh, and just see if I can finish that up a bit to save me having to polish everything out. So, uh, yeah, probably take about an hour again, but never mind, gotta do it right. Right, well, that's basically generated a little bit of dust, and that's about it. And it does feel quite smooth, that's pretty good. Maybe just a few little wiggles. But not terrible. I think if I go over that with a little bit of fine wire wool, uh, maybe even polish it slightly. But otherwise, that's looking quite good. So, uh, all right, let's get this out, put the uh, truck back in, and reclock it. See how good we've done. Right. Now that's zero. If I go down one millimeter, that's a millimeter. That's two millimetres plus or minus a bit. Yeah. Okay, that's reasonably consistent about what we had before. So, now let's go try it over on that awkward bit and see if it's any better. That's zero. Spot on. One millimetre. I think we fixed it. Zero. One millimetre. Wow. Okay. Zero. Ooh, ten microns. One. Okay, well that's within the tolerance of the gauge. So, right, I'll fly around the whole table, map it all out, and report back. But it's looking pretty good. Well, these are the figures that I was originally getting with this quite conspicuous high area plus 160 microns over in this corner. And having surfaced that plate, this is what I'm getting now. So that area is gone and I've got one very slightly low area here, 10 microns down it says, and I've checked that a few times. But everywhere else is pretty much consistent right away across that plate, uh, 10 microns in it. And that's pretty much the resolution of the uh, the gauge. I am using a, a 15 micron backlash compensation on this, I've already checked that before and that may not be exact, it's somewhere between 10 and 20 so uh, split the difference, call it 15 so that's throwing in a slight area as well, a slight error. Uh, there's also the fact that the spindle has been cooling down since I did the machining and that can affect it, the spindle's about 500 millimeters long and steel expands about nine parts per million per degree so each degree of temperature change I would expect to be getting in the order of four or five micron expansion or contraction on the spindle so a couple of degrees could easily throw this out by 10 microns so it's not bad to be honest uh, I think that's probably going to do for the foreseeable future I'll leave that plate where it is it may need to come off for the occasional job but uh, Apart from that, I'd say this machine is pretty much good to go, at least on the Z-axis. Now I just need to check the X and the Y, but uh, yeah, so far, so good.